lager. So, what is it? A wallpaper? Clear and tell? I mixed the drinks wrong, or what? 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 What is it? Do not ag me, Dave. I'm depressed. I'm depressed and all. This is all very depressing. You're right, then. Yeah. Twelves. I'm dying, Terry. I'm dying. We're all dying, Arthur. I'm sp I'm speaking business-wise. Oh, yeah. Man of my sensitivity in middle years does not need to be reminded of physical mortality. Thank you very much. <laughs> rage, rage against the dying of the blight. Hey, Dylan Thomas, man after my own heart. Oh, it. And a piss artist. And I think you'll find it's light, not blight. Not if you'd seen his liver. <laughs> <laughs> now, you see, Terry, you don't understand the pressure the creative person is under. Mm. The, the terrible strain trying to persuade people to accept your personal vision. Not to mention your personal checks. That's it, mock and titter, mock and titter. Bung the odd mail in when I'm at my lowest ebb. And full flow. Oh, you'll see, you'll see. My phoenix will rise. And daily enterprises will again be a force to reckon with. He may be in the gutter, but he's looking at the drains. What? Come on. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, it's either this or physical damage, George. I mean, you want your story to sound convincing, don't you? All I need is one really good coup to set me up. Yeah, well, if it's anything crooked, just leave me out, all right? Oh, and another thing. Something has got to be done about self-inflicted. What do you suggest? A stomach pump? Come on, look, he's giving me serious headaches. Oh, don't talk to me about headaches. Oh, look at this. Who would have thought it was once a major clearing house for top-class consumer durables? Never mind all that. What are we going to do about self-inflicting? Either am I talking about lost empires and you're giving me one of life's dedicated losers? Have, have you no sensitivity for my dilemma? Sensitivity? He was sick on my duvet. Really? Yeah. That's funny. I've never known him eat anything.
back. Allow me to introduce you to self-inflicted Sid. One of the manor's more colorful miscreants. It's like a bupa salesman's worst nightmare. Aye. Rumor has it he was once nearly employed as a government health warning. What are you going to do? Fit me up because I've got a bit of a chest problem. Where is Arthur, by the way? Who? Daily. What am I, gross or what? If you want him, you find him. Do you let low life talk to you like that, Gov? I am a tolerant man. Apart from which, no one tells him anything anyway. Come on. There you go, Maury. Fresh as a daisy. See for yourself. Where are you getting all this produce, Justin? Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no pulpies. Have we got a trade or what? OK. Slip them into the shop. Done. All right, chaps. How's it going? OK, you? Yeah, cracking on, cracking on. Where do you want these? Out of pack or what? So do you show you where. Right. Flash little sud. <laughs> <laughs> Everything all right? Sweet as a nut. It's in the slaughter. Invoice listing, what's in it? Your problem is you're in a time warp. Time warp? Me? Don't be ridiculous. Listen, to run a business these days, it's all high tech. You punch a few buttons and there it is, all on the little green screens for you. It's microchip mentality, you see. That's what you need to own a crust. Mind you, I suppose it can't be easy to adjust as a senior citizen, can it? Keep it up, keep it up. I bet there's something else you're having trouble with these days and all. That's it, you're fired. <laughs> oh, God. Good joke, is it, Teddy? Well, Arthur didn't think so, no. no. I hope this is a social visit and not an official one, Taff. Just making the round, Arthur. Ah. Here, I've heard you've been made up to a sergeant, you. That's right, Terry. Let me introduce you to my new colleague, DC Jack MacDonald. They get younger every day, don't they? I don't get any better looking, though. Jack is fresh from the Highlands of Scotland and a keen student of the criminal classes. Well, he won't learn much about them here, will he, Terry? Not many, no. As a respected member of the business community, I am pleased to welcome an officer of the law. Arthur Daly, at your dedicated service. No, all about you. I've read your file. And where I come from, we don't fraternise with villains. No, no, no. A few misdemeanours in the dim and distant does not make me a villain, Jock as your senior colleague here will no doubt testify. And I don't like to get called Jock. You remember that. Who trained him? Rycott. You've got to learn a few more manners, Jock. Now, now, Terry, let us not demean ourselves with unseemly hostility. Well, it's very nice to see you again, Taff, but you must excuse me. Busy time for me now, you know, reorganising, restructuring. Oh, excuse me. Arthur Daly Enterprises, Arthur Daly himself speaking. Oh, fuck. It's me, Sid. Oh, hello, Sidney. Can you talk? Oh, yes, yes, I, I'm listening. I thought I'd better ring and give you the office. Plot's been down here sneaking about off here. Yeah. Didn't declare what for. But if I didn't tell him nothing, I kept well stung, so you'd be on your toes. Is that all, Sidney? Well, well, I told him to clear off, didn't I? Thank you, Sidney. Arthur already has that information. What? Misguided staff loyalty, you understand? Hello, Sidney. You're a cretin. Hold on, hold on. Where's he ringing from? I neither know nor care, Terry. Oi, you, where are you ringing from? Who is this? Who is that? It's me, Terry. Where are you ringing from? Oh, Kel. Yeah, who is that other geezer? What's happening? Look, are you ringing from my flat? Well, um, uh, yeah. But I took the keys off you. How'd you get back in there? Well, it was an emergency. Tell her uh, uh, through the kitchen window. You broke in through my kitchen window? Don't worry, Tell, but there ain't much damage. At least I don't think so. Oh, God. I'm going to do a bit of eviction. You want to lodge a complaint? Like breaking and entering charges against self-inflicted? No, thanks. If I want any help, I'll get a policeman. An English one. 
all of them. Throughout the park. And you discovered this when you unlocked the park this morning, sir? It was five hours ago when I reported it. We have got more important problems to deal with, sir. Excuse me. Tell me, Mellish, why are the wooden tops not dealing with this? Well, you know why, Gov. Because the super told you to. Take his statement. I'll wait in the car. Oi, you. Oi, wake up. Sid, wake up, you bum. What? What's happening? Where am I? I'm going to kill you. Oh, Chill, it's you, mate. Did you hear what I said? You're going to kill me. Oh. Your eyes. You ought to see them from this side. Myers Garden Centre. Oh, hello, Jimmy. What's happening? He's what? When? What was it? Yeah, of course I have. No. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. Okay. Bad news, Murray. It ain't good. Lebanese Larry dropped dead this morning. Heart attack. Bloody inconvenient. I was supposed to have a trade with him this evening. Well, look, I know it's none of my business, but if there's anything I can do to help... Not unless you know someone I can knock out a lorry load of electrical goods to on the hurry-up. Yeah, leave it to me, I know. Just the men. Oh, yeah. Who? Arthur Daly. Arthur who? So what sort of dough are we talking about here, Charlie? Well, that's a uh, monkey deposit and uh, two or a week rent. Oh, it's a bit strong, isn't it? Well, it's a good sight. Plenty of passing trade. Could you, could you just move your leg? Oh, God! Arthur, what sort of motor is this? One of rapidly increasing depreciation. There is nothing to follow up. You type that report, you file it, and you forget it. I've got more to worry about than a bunch of flowers. Yeah, but what about the quality of life, Governor? I mean, the ratepayers' rights to behold the beauty of nature in our public parks. You have got a disturbing romantic view of life, Mellish. Would you be fit an officer of the law? The Governor's still keeping you busy on the great park robberies? Is he wrong? Well, somebody's got to protect the quality of life for the public. Aye, aye, but it just sort of occurred to me like that it's hardly the kind of crime that warrants the attention of a detective sergeant now, is it? Mm -hmm. No, vandalism of this magnitude, it does require the attention of a more senior, experienced officer, I believe. Oh, I'm sure the Governor has chosen the right man for the job, Ron. I've just brought in a bloke who reckons he's been kidnapped, chloroformed and had his lorry nicked. The desk sergeant thinks someone should have a word with him. Oh. Oh, yeah, all right, Harry. Uh, get his details. I'll be along in a few moments. Come on, Charlie. Uh, hey, undo your seatbelt. Oh. Undo it. Hey, that's it. Come on. Look, I don't want you to think I'm being rude or anything, Charlie, but have you ever considered the Scargill diet? Done wonders for our indoors. <coughs> We've got lots don't, here. Don't get personal, Arthur. It's glandular, isn't it? I have to eat a lot. Yeah, I can see that uh, that would... Uh... Is this it? Yeah. All right, isn't it? Plenty of passing trade. 
American tourists looking for St Paul's on a Sunday. Well, it ain't always this quiet. People cut through here to get to the high road round the corner. It's a bit small, isn't it? From what I hear, you ain't got a lot to put in it anyway. I'm planning to expand in the very near. Well, it'll do till then, won't it? Fifty sobs a week, no deposit. I asked you how long you've been employed by the firm, Mr. Babcock. Oh, uh, no, not very long. Uh, just recently. Recently. Could you be a little more precise? About a week. Uh, four days, to be precise. Were you asked to supply references? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a driver. That's what I do for a living. It's my job. So this sort of thing has happened to you before, has it? Pardon? Thanks, but I don't think I'll bother. No, all right. uh, have you had a look uh, at the little uh, no, green thanks hill? Thanks very much. I'll pass, sir. Thanks very much. All right, mate. Cheers. No joy? Nah. Would you buy a second-hand motor off of Arthur Daly? <laughs> don't be daft. But I know a way you could lose him and cop all the dough. Yeah, well, don't bother me. I'm not interested. You seen him yet? No, I think I'll dwell at the Winchester. He's bound to turn up there at some point. Do you fancy a drink? Nah, no, maybe later. Got things to do. I've got to sort out the flat. Take me washing down the laundrette all day. Why don't you get a bird to do all that stuff? Nah. Now you let a Richard start doing the domestics. Next thing you know, they want to move in, don't they? Yeah, I thought you're right. Here, yeah, tell Arthur ain't skin, is he? Well, he's pleading poverty, but... No, he's got to have something stashed away somewhere, hasn't he? Listen, I've got to go, mate. I'll see you later, all right? All right, tell you. But, sir, this man is lying through his teeth. He's set himself up. He is a part of it. He's confessed to that, has he? Made a statement and signed it? Well, not exactly, no. But if I checked his credentials, been in touch with his previous employers, the only one he gave me. So what evidence do you have to justify holding him any longer? Instinct, sir, plus uh, years of experience. I don't want to hear about your self-deluding instincts. When the medical examiner has finished with Mr. Babcock, he is free to leave. Is that clear? Crystal is opaque by comparison, sir. All right there, Harry. Oh, hello. Arthur. The man himself, I've been looking all over for you. So I am. Bottle your finest bubbly, please, Dave. I wish to celebrate Arthur's good fortune. You must know something he doesn't know. Boy, there's little I know that Arthur hasn't already forgotten. This is Mr. Numero Uno, the governor. Capo di Capo on the manor. In that case, you must know something I don't know. Bollinger, all right? That'll do nicely. I don't take plastic. May I ask, uh, what is this good fortune I'm celebrating? The acquisition of enough electrical domestic appliances to fill your slaughter. Warehouse. Whereas to capacity. Interested? I'm disappointed, Arthur. I'm really disappointed. I didn't say I wasn't interested. I'm just thinking about it, that's all. But the person I used to know was decisive. Had plenty of street cred. Always knew a good deal when he saw it and went for it. Maybe this person who I've always considered to be my mentor, my inspiration, has passed it. This, uh, this person you're referring to, uh, do I know him? It's all about you, Arthur. Oh, me? Me? Oh, history, am I? So what happened to Mr. Numero Uno, Capo de whatever it was? Well, precisely. The way I hear it, you're not exactly cracking away on the entrepreneurial front anymore, which causes me distress and disillusion. I mean, especially when the people in our game say half a who. They do? Who do? Well, exactly, you don't know who. Look, just because I'm keeping a low profile at the moment in order to reorganise and restructure my growth potential, does not mean that I am no longer a front-runner in the black economy states, and I do not need a young whippersnapper like you to tell me otherwise. All right, Arthur, have it your way. I'm just trying to do you a favour down to the old pals act. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 
How much did you say this uh, Morris What's It was asking? You local? Sorry? Do you live around here? No, I travel all the way from Birmingham just so I can do my washing in here. <laughs> I like a girl with a sense of humour. <laughs> you know, you remind me of someone. Really? My dad. He's going through a midlife crisis as well. <laughs> It's like I said, he wants to get shot on the hurry up. It's a license to print. Be a nice little earner for you, Arthur. Yeah, you see, I've got this complicated cash flow situation just at the minute. Don't worry about it. Everything's negotiable. You taught me that. Besides, I've already given the office that you're an honourable man to do business with. Trust my judgment, didn't he? <coughs> oh, what are you doing here? Just want to check that everything's OK, Arthur. You know, after that trouble we had with the odd lot. Hey, Sydney, we're trying to talk business here. Well, of our own, is it? Who is that loon? Self-inflicted. Uh, one of life's tragic bits of flotsam washed up on the sea of humanity. I'll bung him a few quid from time to time to do the odd menial. Oh, right. Yeah, it's one of the burdens I have to bear because of my incurable, humane and charitable nature. Why is he called self-inflicted? He clocked the scar on the side of his boat. Yeah. Striped himself with a razor in order to look the part. Figured it would make him more acceptable to the fraternity. Nah. Yeah. Some people will do anything to climb the social ladder, won't they? <laughs> you interested in that? Yeah. You flogging them? That's right, yeah. I just got my licence, didn't I? Looking for my first car in it. Look, do yourself a favour. Go and look somewhere else, eh? Apart from a dodgy rear axle, the gearbox is on the way out. Yeah? Yeah. Let me give you some advice. You see, cars, they're... Well, they're like women. Yeah, you always remember the first one. Now, you don't want to go through life remembering a nightmare, do you? Nah, of course you don't. Go on. Good luck. Cheers. Terry tells me you're having a bit of trouble shifting that pile of old bangers you got lined up outside his gap. All good, clean runners. Bargain at half the price. Half the price would be about right. That's the trouble with a punter today. They want to steal them off the poor, honest trader. Are we nearly there? Give me a mirror on a stick and I might be able to tell you. You should have come in my van, Arthur. I do not go to important meets in a van. I have an image to maintain. Oh, yeah, I can see how this motor would impress anyone. Right, go to the end of here, chuck a left, then another left, and a right, and then we're there. I could shift those motors for you, Arthur. Yeah, if you're talking about having them disappear into the crush and then claiming they've been nicked, forget it. Insurance companies are well up on that these days. Hard enough with one motor. More chance with half a dozen. Nah, this is a different move. Guaranteed no comebacks, and to all intents and purposes, totally legit. And what does this miracle of marketing entail? Let me worry about that, Arthur. Thing is, you stand to make near enough every sob you're asking on those motors, minus my small commission for uh, services rendered, of course. So why do I have this terrible feeling of foreboding? Don't know, Arthur. Mind you, they do say the old bottle starts to twinge a bit as you reach a certain age. Oh! So what do you think, Arthur? We got a deal? I think I might be able to accommodate you, Maury, provided you're happy about the financial arrangements. 50% when you collect, and the balance in a couple of days, right? Yeah, you see, I'm, uh, I'm moving a lot of capital around at the moment. Don't worry. Believe me, I understand cash flow problems. And young Justin here tells me you'll coach, huh? Uh, the man's word is a legend in the business, isn't it, Arthur? Well, modesty forbids, but uh, I do have a certain reputation for total integrity. I do hope so, Arthur. It does cause me a lot of pain if I have to go looking for my creditors. And them, of course. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure. And, and it, it's all right about the transport? Sure, no problem. Just let me know when you've unloaded and I'll get someone to come and pick it up. Oh, no, no, no. No need for that. One of my men will bring it back. Please. It's a courtesy. I insist. Oh, well, <laughs> you put it like that. What can I say?
Tomorrow morning, then? As soon as I've been up the bank. Here. Well, what are you giving it to me for? Because I'm not going with you. I've got a lot of running about to do. I want to get shot of this cotton as a job lot. No more messing about with bits and pieces. That's the new business dynamic today. Buy and then sell without going near the commodity. All right, then, cop up. What for? Well, if you're not giving me a lift, I want a cab fare. And what is wrong with public transport, may I inquire? Nothing. No, 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 hold on, hold on. Here you are. Here you are. And I expect change. So I'll see you back at the lockup. Yeah. Oh, I nearly forgot. Listen, park the lorry up on Fat Charlie's site, the one I'm going to be renting from him. You can't miss it. It's in Cornhill Street, back of the I Street, all right? Oh, hold on, hold on. What's wrong with the yard at the lockup? Nothing, Terry. But it's a big lorry. Where am I going to park the motor if I want to be there? The street? Street? What, and be prey to envy vandalism? Taxi! Say gets a pull on the way over there. It's not our problem anymore, is it? And if he doesn't, then we're another five grand in, aren't we? So what do you think, Keith? I'm always up for a trade, if the price is right, Arthur. At the price I'm asking, you'll think you stole it from me. <laughs> that means it's okay. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Keith. No, 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 there's no question of this merchandise being suspect. On that, you have my committed word. All right, all right. Let's have a look. Where and when? Well, shall we say an hour's time at the Winchester? Okay, then. See ya. Hello, Ronnie. What are you doing here? This is my case. What are you doing here? Your case? Oh, that wasn't the impression the super gave me. Is this common behaviour down here? What behaviour is that, Mac? This undignified rivalry between so-called colleagues. Different over the border, is it, then? What's the score, then? Well, as you can see, Ron, we're endeavouring to discover if it's still loaded or not. Loaded? Of course it won't be loaded, will it? <laughs> I mean, what sort of an idiot would leave a stolen lorry out in the open like this if he hadn't already unloaded it? It is obvious to me that they've panicked and just dumped it here. Lacks a certain logic, doesn't it, Ron? Not that it is of any particular interest, but what makes you think that? Well, if they panicked, it would be for only one reason. Like they'd been spotted. And if they had, we'd have heard about it, wouldn't we? Not necessarily, no. They might have thought they'd been spotted. Unlikely, though, isn't it? I mean, it's not unknown for stolen lorry loads to be packed up somewhere quiet and then picked up and unloaded at a more opportune moment. That is your theory, is it? My experience, Ron, my experience. Experience? What bloody experience? I am the experienced officer here. And I say we'll get the forensic team down here immediately to go over this for dabs and anything else that might show up. 
In that case, you'd better inform the super, then. Why should I bother him for what is routine procedure? Because it was him who told me if the lorry was loaded, we'd put it under surveillance. There you go, Harry. Cheers, Dave. So come on, when's this geezer arriving, then? What geezer? Well, this buyer you've sorted. Oh, Keith. Well, he should be on his way now. As soon as he gets here, we'll schlep over to the lorry so he can confirm the cargo. Then you run it round to his place for unshipping. Well, then what about the lorry? Take it back to the site. We'll be picked up by one of Morrie's men. Arthur! Arthur! Charlie, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be fixing that porter thingy for my new car sales office. That's just it, Arthur. I was on my way to do it, wasn't I? And what do I see when I arrive? Oh, the lorry! Well, I didn't think it mattered since I was on the verge of renting the place from you. It's not in the way, is it? I've got a feeling the old Bill might think so. What? What did you say? They were crawling all over it as I went by the place, and I didn't hang about to inquire why. That place is down to me, Arthur. If you've put me in it... Oh, hold up, hold up. What do you actually mean, the old Bill were all over it? Oh, looking through it. You know, they had the back open, and they were looking to see what was in and that. Oh, my good gold. What do you mean, oh, my good gold? This is straight, isn't it? You told me it was straight. It is, it is. So why am I good golding it then? It's a natural reflex response to plod probing my property. I'm, I'm as mystified as you are. And I don't like the smell of this. Bloody right, it stinks. No, no, you stuck this up. What's going on? Leave it out, Till. I only know as much as Arthur. Tell him, Arthur. He's right. What's right? Just he's right. This ain't right. Bloody right, it ain't right. What ain't right? Now, listen, you. I don't want any of your lies. I don't want any of that evasive crap. I want the full SP and I want it now. You got it? Well, Terence, what can I say? I purchased a lorry load of goods various in good faith. Good faith? You said it was proper. You said you checked it out. I did, I did. Well, insofar as one can in the circumstances. I knew it. I knew it. Well, I could hardly run a full security check on a man, could I? Justine told me he was sound. He seemed sound. He is sound, isn't he? Well, there has to be an element of trust in business, or there'd be no business, would there? Oh, tell me I'm not hearing this. Tell me I haven't stood for it again. Well, I don't know what you're moaning about. If I've been deceived, I stand to lose considerable capital investment. And I stand to lose my liberty. It's down to you again. Steady on, Tell. You ain't getting any younger, you know. No, neither am I. Look, thing is, Tell, if this does turn out to be a wrong, and I mean, who's to know you was involved, eh? I mean, we're all going to keep still, so what can they prove? What can they prove? Oh, nothing about you or... Him or that geezer Murray. But my dabs are all over the cab of that lorry, aren't they? Yeah, and it's on my side. Yeah, but that ain't a problem, Charlie. I mean, it ain't your fault if someone dumps a lorry on your side without your knowledge, is it? Dave, can I say something? I'm getting tired of this constant reference to my age. Shut up, you. Come in. We're going. Where are we going? Where are we going? Man called Murray about a lorry. Andrew, you're coming in all. Come hold on. on. Hold on, hang on a minute. Look. Maybe we should check this out before we go steaming into Mori. I mean, he's got a few tasty geezers round there, you know. He's right, Terry, he's right. Well, I think the best thing is for me to dwell here and you go and have a look. Well, I go and have a look. Well, I can hardly put my boat on offer, can I? I might be recognised. What happens if I'm bleeding recognised? Nobody need be recognised. Follow me. Harry, you're driving. Come here. About time they got here. How long do you think we'll be sat here then, Gov? If nothing happens, until we get relieved at midnight. Last well, night's surveillance detail I was assigned. We're waiting for a gang of rustlers. <laughs> what a laughing matter. Back where I come from, sheep rustling's almost a capital offence, I hope you know. At least we could go for a wee in the bushes. So he wanted to be back, did he? Uh, no, not exactly. Uh, but he did tell me to ask you to hang on for a bit, if you can. Hey, uh, up. Yeah. Couple of geezers in a motor. Take a blimp as we go by. Go on, then. Listen, you got me into this. You go on, then. Good God! 
What's that, Gav? I could have sworn that... <laughs> no. No, I couldn't get that lucky. Oh, no! He's on us! He's on us! What's up with you? It was right caught in that car! It's all on top! It's all on top! Is it all right, Tell? Well, they're not following, no, but... That's it, isn't it? That confirms it. And we've just passed a van. I'll take odds it's chocker with them. Oh, no. Terry, you've got to have a word with that Maury. I want my money back. Arthur! Nice to see you so soon. Come to pay me off, have you? Uh, no. I am. Oh, yeah? Get it off. Oh, look, look, all right, all right, leave it at it, Tell, leave it at it. Look, let's be sensible about this, eh? See what the man's got to say first, yeah? Okay. Some problem, is there? If he comes in, tell him to give me a bell and let me know what's happening. Will do. I hate to have to say this, but it's a sorry lorry, Maury. What is this? Who are you trying to kid? Are you seriously telling me you didn't know that load wasn't from a jump up? No, no, there's been some misunderstanding. No mention was made of the fact that the lorry was stolen. And it's put my man here, Terry, in considerable jeopardy. But, but more importantly, I want my readies returned. Can you believe these clowns? <sighs> we'll see who the clowns are when I give the full SP to the old Bill. Hey, you can't do that, Till. That's grassing. You'll be bang out of order. Oh, me doing porridge for nothing isn't, I suppose. Look, tell the filth whatever you want. Who are they going to believe? You two losers with form? Or me? A respectable businessman who's never had a conviction in his life. There's no reason why I should be transported like a parcel. A man of my years needs proper back support. Shut it, Arthur, or we'll drop you off now while we're still moving. I've got it. I just thought of a way to get you out of this, Tell. Yeah, go on. Torch it. Do what? Burn it, set light to the thing. Then there's no chance for forensic. It's not a bad idea, Terry, not a bad idea at all. What are you talking about? Of course, if we could find a way to get the gear out first. Don't be daft, Arthur. Listen, who do you think is going to be lunatic enough to go near that thing now that the old Bill are eyeballing it all the time, eh? <laughs> How'd it go then? If I said badly, Dave, that would be wildly optimistic. That's a good one. Here, that geezer was it. Excuse me, Dave. <coughs> Sydney, how oh, good to see a real friend and one of your own. Let me buy you a drink. What are you have? All right, darling. Hello, mate. Hello. What are you doing round here? Looking for you. Oh, yeah. Why? See how my favourite one parent's getting on? Oh, you know, quiet desperation. But coping. Well, look, I can help you out there. You interested in earning a few quid for yourself and young Peter? Tomorrow. Do we have to wait that long? <sighs> Hello? Hello? Is that you, Don? Yes, Captain. What's that strange noise? Sounds like a pig. It is, but you didn't hear that from me. What? Never mind. Oh. I, uh, just making sure you're still awake. Terry, it's a doddle. We park up in the street round the back of the site because I haven't got that covered. How do you know? Well, I checked it out, didn't I? Look, with all due respect, Justin, I don't care what you've got worked out. I don't want anything to do with it. Terry, I do not understand your ingratitude. We are putting ourselves right on offer to save your skin. Save mine? Listen, it was you two who got me into this in the first place. But anyway, it's poor old Sid who's being put on offer, innit? How did you talk him into this? Didn't have to. Volunteered the moment he heard about your plight. Arthur, the man's brain is pickled. He don't know what he's letting himself in for. Where is he, anyway? Waiting in a van with several litres of lead free. I am not going to let that Welsh leak beat me to the collar. You know that, don't you, Manish? I think I understand, Gov.
I don't know about this. Don't worry, Terry. It's a million. No, I think Terry's right. I think we should go back to the flat and rethink our strategy. Hey, my father. This is my big chance, isn't it? You promised me. See? Or you. Make sure you give that cab a good dousing. Yeah. Look, Sid, we appreciate you trying to help and all that, but this could turn out really dodgy. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about my bottle, Joe. You can rely on me. I'm one of your own, innit? I? sure about this? Leave it to me, Joe. You get back. Back. Aye, aye. This could be something. Right, let's go for Gov. Come on, lads. I'm all right, you cretin. <laughs> Do you like a cigarette, sir? No, 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 he's trying to give up. Hang on. Strong smell of petrol around here. Understand it, Dave. It says here the police blame arsonists. Self inflicted, said he never got a chance to light a match. <laughs> what does it matter, Arthur? The thing is, Terry is well off the hook. It's a right result. Right result? I'd done five grand in cold. <laughs> I don't know. That's not so cold. <laughs> not in the least humorous, Dave. You're looking at a man facing financial ruin. Yeah, that reminds me. Justin just rang in, said to be round at Terry's about one o'clock. Said something about compensation. Compensation? Right, 
to now. Bloody hell have you done? Good, isn't it? What's your armor? What do you reckon? It's done the trick, isn't it? What happened? Who has done this terrible thing to me? Me, of course. You. With a little help from the truck, yeah. I want him maimed, Terry. I want him dismembered right now. Leave it out, Arthur. This is the coup, isn't it? Genuine accident. The kid runs out into the road and I had to swerve violently to avoid killing him. Nothing else I could do. And we got a genuine witness. Right, love? Yeah, could have killed him, couldn't he? It's a miracle he managed to avoid him. Oh, well, there you go. I mean, what insurance company's going to argue with that, eh? My policy won't cover all this. No, but the one I took out on the truck for the day will. And it didn't hardly cost me anything. Well, that's about right, isn't it? What? Classic daily enterprises economics. How to lose five grand, but gain two in one 24-hour business blitz. <laughs> yeah. He might be in the gutter, but he's looking at the drains. Shouldn't that be the stars? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>